Hi, this is Lisa Kelly, Notre Dame author and class of 1993, and you are watching the Two Irish Brothers Show. Cheers and go Irish! Second and nine, Meyer going deep for Smith, Irv Smith. What a run by Smith. Look at that, touchdown, oh my. This is a beautiful fake by Meyer. Now a nice touch right up over the top. Now this, this is a, this is a backup tied in. He Look was hit at this one, 8, 15, 10, 5. Smith trying to help out. No, I was off by 5. <laughs> by 10, there. How's it going, everyone? I'm N.D. Sean, 45. I'm Irish Benjamin, 57. And together we are the two Irish brothers. And ladies and gentlemen, we have a special treat for you here in this video. Um, we have a special guest with us, uh, uh, joining us via telephone. And it is the gentleman that you just saw in that clip. So please welcome, without further ado, the one and only former Notre Dame tight end, Irv Smith. Irv, how you doing, man? I'm doing awesome, guys. So good to be here with you. Thanks for having me on the show, and certainly looking forward to talking to you guys. Yeah, oh, same here. That's uh, that's shared by all of us, by both of us here, man. Uh, now, first thing, Ir Irv, I got to ask you, and I know you've had a bunch of people ask you about that play against Indiana. Um, did you ever work for a cab service after your time at Notre Dame? Because you seem really good at giving people a lift. Well, I tell you, man, it, that, that was a special moment. You know, that, that's a, a play that I'll never forget, a play that a lot of people will never forget me for. And it was a very, it was a highlight of my career when I think back to, you know, all the things that I did and have done. You know, that certainly has got to be up on the top of the list of all the, the special moments that I had playing ball, especially playing in Notre Dame. And if I'm not mistaken, I heard you say in, in another interview that at that time, that was your first touchdown since high school? Well, that's exactly what it was. It was my high school, you know, that was my, that was my junior year, you know, and I, and I played behind D. Brown my first year, and I played behind him my second year, and I was going to play behind him my third year. But that particular, that was, you know, early in the season, I think it was the first game or two of the year in Indiana, and I hadn't scored since high school. So when I scored that touchdown, I was so hungry that you know, all I knew was I saw the goal line, I, I caught the ball in stride, I saw the end zone, and all I knew I wanted to do was get to the end zone. It was a great moment. Well, all I know is you, you definitely gave a lot of us Irish fans a great memory with that one because, I mean, even with my brothers and I and, and Ben as well, we still talk about that play to this day, and my oldest brother was telling me, Sean, it's so awesome you're, that you and your friend are getting to talk to Irv because that was one of the best uh, – the best catch and runs I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> so you gave us, you definitely gave us a good memory. That's for sure. But uh, first thing, Irv, is we want to, we do want to learn a little bit, bit about you. Now, if you could briefly um, give us a little bit about your history. I mean, what what first got you interested in the sport of football in general? Well, you know, I, I just grew up in a very athletic family where my parents uh, they 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 wanted me and my brother to play sports in general. They wanted us to. Stay busy and stay out of trouble. That's what the purpose of sports were when we were growing up. You know, we didn't have any plans on, you know, being any, you know, professional football players or anything like that. It was just one of those things where we were just trying to be good ball players. And, um, you know, at the end of the day, you know, we just had fun. It just kept us out of trouble, kept us busy, and we, you know, just we had fun. So at the end of the day, you know, once we, you know, got into higher levels of playing ball, it was one of those things where, you know, we just wanted to be the best. And it just continued on the process. And I had an older brother who was a pioneer for us, and he did some big things, and just, he kind of transpired me into just wanting to be as good as him, if not better, and, you know, lo and behold, it allowed me to start playing football, which football was something I was good at because it's an athletic sport, and I played athletics since I was a, a young kid, and before I know it, you know, my natural abilities was just gave me the opportunity to play long term, and I just kept playing because it was something I loved to do, and it was just something that got me to a whole other level. Go ahead, Ben. So, so let me let me ask you, Herb, you know, describe your relationship with Lisa Kelly. Oh, Lisa's my buddy. You know, she's my classmate. 
date. You know, I met her when I was 17 years old. I was a freshman at Notre Dame, and, you know, we became friends, you know. Just, you know your, your, your Notre Dame friends are friends you have forever because, you know, they know you from when you were nobody, when you were just a, a, a humble kid that came from a small town that just wanted to be something special, and we were all broke, and we were all eating together in the, the, the dining hall and just hanging out with each other. And, and those are the people that you know are your friends because of who you are, not because of of what you've done and things like that. At least one of those friends that I've had since for, for over 30 years and I'll have her for the rest of my life. That's awesome, dude. That's incredible. And that act, that actually leads me to the next question that I was going to ask you. I mean, obviously, it sounds like Lisa was one of them, but when you got to Notre Dame, when you first arrived on campus, uh, who, who were some of the people that helped you uh, transition into uh, into the collegiate level of, of football and just just college in general? Well, that's, that's, that's a very good question. You know, there are so many people that are inspirational in our – you know, transcending from young uh, high school kids to college to the next level, uh, but but getting you know acclimated to college life. People like Derek Brown, who's my big brother, but of course tight end before me. You know, so unselfish. Anything I, and I needed, he was always there for me. Um, you know, uh, Rodney Culver was a great, very great friend of mine. He was actually a part of my host when I came out for my visit, and he was always one of those guys who was there for me. Another guy named Braxton Banks, who was a a, a veteran when I got to school. There's, I, I could name off so many guys. At the end of the day, there was just people that, you know, and of course, Lou Holtz, and of course, Joe Moore, and, you know, all the people that just, you know, they poured their hearts into us as individuals and to help us become the men we are today. And so there's so many people that we can thank. We don't want to thank anybody because we'd be leaving people out for sure. But I can tell you, there's so many people that went into helping me become the man that I am today. It almost doesn't sound like a fair question, does it? It, it's not possible. We, we'd be here for another four, three, four hours naming our people and talking about experiences and old times and things that they did for us because, you know, they, it's the same thing the village to raise a, a, a child. When you go to Notre Dame, you're still a child. And there's so many people that, that are inspirational and helping you get to that next level. I look at pictures of myself and a bunch of my classmates and a bunch of guys that I, I, I played ball with uh, freshman year, sophomore year, junior year, even senior year. I look at those pictures today, and we all look like such babies because we were so young, <laughs> and we were so, you know, we were we were so raw back then, and now we're all grown men with children and families and things like that, and we've come such a long way. Oh, I know that feeling. I, I look at old high school pictures of myself, and I realize where'd that guy go. Um, <laughs> but but uh, another speak, but speak, with Notre Dame, Irv. And I've always been curious with this with a, a lot of a lot of different players. I mean, I don't think that all of you guys grew up watching Notre Dame or cheering for Notre Dame. Most likely a lot of you guys cheered for a different school. But when you're going through the recruiting process, how how do you do you narrow down your choice? I mean, is there like a, a specific thing that you focus on or or is it just what what your gut tells you? I think most guys that I play ball with specifically uh, we're going to go to, for instance, if you were from Florida, you were going to go either Florida, Florida State, or Miami. If you were from, you know, uh, the East Coast, you were going to go to maybe Penn State. Or you were, you were, you were going to go to a more popular school. You have to understand something. Notre Dame, if you don't really know about Notre Dame, I didn't even know where Notre Dame was because of my, my business to go out there because you don't know where Notre Dame is. You know where Florida State is. You know where University of Southern California is. You know where Penn State is because those are named after the location. So most of us did not grow up following Notre Dame because, number one, Notre Dame was not a state school anywhere near us. Uh, most of us were looking at more of a, you know, a, a, a school in an area that we were closer to. But what ended up happening was Notre Dame had such recruiters when I was coming out. Um, example, um, Coach Holt, number one, and Vinny Serrano, number two. Those guys, they, went, they, they searched the world to find, in my opinion, the best talent and they didn't care if you lived in Chiefland, Florida, like Oscar McBride, or if you lived in Brownsville, New Jersey, like Irv Smith. They were going to find us, bring us there, and give us a chance to be the best we could be and play for the best university. That's awesome, man. That's awesome because I've always, I've always been curious. Like when when you're a, a a top athlete recruit out of high school, I mean, it's got to be crazy to narrow down those choices. And uh, anyway, Ben, it's your turn. I don't I don't I feel like I'm hogging the show here. No, no, you're fine. I love it every minute. So, I mean, we all we all know about football. You know, we, we, we see you guys 
you know, do your amazingness on the field and all that. But a lot of people don't know, you know, life after football. So, so tell us a little bit about like what you do now and, and what you're up to and all that. Well, the biggest thing that I'm, I'm honored to be as a, as a parent, I've got a 21 year old son that I've been, you know, just spending a lot of time with him over the last 21 years. But that's been my life after football. I left it. I left football in 2000 when my son was two years old. I, I, I walked up, walked off the NFL because I, I wanted to be there for my son. And I was tired of traveling and football being the main thing in my life. And so for the last 21 years, I've been able to really just spend time with my son and help him become the man that he is. I'm a real estate broker. I've been licensed in real estate for 20 years now as well. Do a lot of stuff with, you know, working with clients as far as uh, buyers and sellers and doing investment properties for myself and fixing flipping properties. If, if you name it real estate, I've probably done it over the last 20 years. And that's really what I love to do. That's my passion outside of uh, where I play football. That's really awesome, Irv. And it, and it sounds like you've been doing pretty well. And, you know, unfortunately, as we, we've seen from various documentaries, there's some guys where it's football, that's all they know. And, you know, as awesome as it, as it is, I think that's kind of sad when that's all you know how to do. And we've seen how they how the well, outs treated them. I've been very blessed. You know, when I, when I went to Notre Dame, I was told by a guy named Rodney Colbert, Rodney said, Irv, he said, if you come to Notre Dame, he said, I can't guarantee you're going to win, win a national championship. He said, you're going to be on TV every week. You're going to play a lot of football from a lot of people. You have a chance to play in the NFL. But what Notre Dame's going to do for you life after football, no other place in the country can do that for you. And he told me that. And that's the reason I went to Notre Dame. And I can tell you this, without a shadow of a doubt, the number one thing Notre Dame did with me was prepare me for life after football. Yeah, I can I can vouch for that. I mean, myself personally, I come from a Notre Dame family. I've had relatives that go there, and they've pretty much told me the same thing. So what you're saying is a, is dead on dead on accurate. That's for sure. And it, you know, when you talked about you know playing on TV every week, that actually leads me to, to my next question for you, Irv. It's kind of a two in one question, but I wanted to ask you about the 1992 Sugar Bowl. Now. Of course, as we all know, the the ninety one regular season, you guys finished with um, you know losing two of your last three games. You finished the season eight and three. You still made the Sugar Bowl, but of course, we all know the the story with um, you know people. A lot of people are saying you guys didn't deserve to be there. You were going to get destroyed by the Florida Gators, and of course there was you know Coach Holtz and the uh, the whole Cheerios Bowl thing. Um, what was what was the build up to that Sugar Bowl like for you guys? And and hearing all those those negative reports in the media? Well, you know, all that did was excite us to fire us up because we knew the kind of, you know, when you, when you play and practice against people like Chris George and Michael Stonebreaker and Todd Light, and I can name any guys going on, you, when you practice those guys every day, you know how good you are. You know how good your team is. We were, we were a phenomenal team. There was a reason we lost some games, but when you look, when you, when you put the body of work that we did in four years, or if you take, it, take a six- or seven-year period from, let's say, uh, 1987 or 88 before I got there until 2000, until 1993 or 94, you know, you, you can name off players from those teams, and people will be like, wow, like, are you kidding me? You play with Jerome Bettis. You play with Rodney Coles. You play with, I mean, all these names you name off. At the end of the day, when we played that game against Florida, we knew we were a better football team than it. We knew we were going to we were get them – if nothing else, a run for their money, but we ended up beating the brakes off of them, obviously. Um, no different than we played my senior year, my senior year like the Texas a and and we beat them by about 40 points. We're a good football program, and we knew that we could go out there and compete with anybody. And when they said that we, we didn't belong in that bowl cave, we knew one thing. We were to prove everybody wrong, and that's exactly what we did. And yeah, yes, you guys did. And I have some Florida fans that will probably see this and not be happy, but personally, I don't care. Um, now, now, obviously, obviously, 8-3 eight, eight and three wouldn't get you a major bowl bid today, unfortunately, with the way the system works. But, yeah, you guys proved that you, you deserve to be there, and you beat one of the best teams in the country. And the, the follow-up question that I have to that is, of course, in the game itself. I mean, when people look at the 92 Sugar Bowl – they automatically think Jerome Bettis, you know, the bus and the game that he had. I think it was three touchdowns and 140 yards on the ground. But what gets overshadowed by that is you actually had a, a nice performance yourself in that game. I believe like seven catches for 75 yards and a, a, a key touchdown in that game. So 
But tell tell me, Irv, what was that like to be able to do that and to play on on that kind of stage? Which, as we all know, the Sugar Bowl is, you know, one of the most prestigious stages in college football. Well, what most people don't know this, and this is probably this might be one of the first times I've I've actually said this publicly on the air because it really didn't have a lot of value as far as what, what, what ended up happening, but. The Sugar Bowl is what changed my life. I was a football, baseball player in Notre Dame. I played baseball under Coach Pat Murphy. And um, I, my first two years in Notre Dame, I played on the baseball team, which took away from time preparing for football. So when I, so every year after the bowl game, I would go back to Notre Dame and I would actually play baseball until spring spring football. And then during spring football, I'd do football and baseball, and I kind of split time. Well, I, I, I had a, a, a pretty – pretty good game in the Sugar Bowl, and I finished the game up, and I got on a plane, and I flew back home to New Jersey before I flew to uh, Notre Dame to go, to go back to school, and I was planning on going back to school and playing football, uh, playing baseball again, and on my plane ride from uh, New Orleans to New Jersey, it hit me. It said, Herb, it's time for you to get baseball up and focus on football, because I had such a good game, and I loved baseball, but I was a better football player, and that moment made me realize for the first time in my life, it was time to give up baseball. And I'm telling you right now, after that performance in the Sugar Bowl for me, the seven catch, the 70 some yard touchdown, that's what made me decide to give baseball up, go football full time, and make that run to be a first round draft pick. And that's exactly what happened. Wow, uh, that's that, pretty. That, 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 that's a, that, that, that's literally exclusive information that I just shared to share on your show that I've never shared the whole oh. story with anybody in the last 30 years. That's literally the true oh. story. Well, if that's the case, and we are pretty honored and privileged to hear that information. Well, you know, the, the, question, the question you asked is what prompted the answer because no one's ever really asking the question that way. And when you asked me that question, it made me realize as I thought about the answer, you know, that Sugar Bowl is what promote it, it, that performance – I always remember the touchdown. Like, the one thing I remember about that game is the touchdown, but I, I didn't always think about the other catches. You know, you don't, you don't catch 10 touchdowns in a game, but you might catch some passes. But the one the thing that everybody always remembers is the touchdown. But the, the other catches are just as important, if not more important, than that touchdown is. And when you ask that question and brought up those facts, it made me finally realize a big part of that game was not just that touchdown, those additional kicks that helped me get my hands on that ball and start really realizing that this was this was my life, this was my sport, this was my thing, and being a professional NFL tight end was really my long term goal. And I made a decision after that game to literally put all my eggs in one basket, to stop playing around with baseball, and to go play football. Man, a a, ver- a true life changing event, and we got to hear it. That's <laughs> that's unbelievable. I think. I think, you know, Ben, I think Lisa might have been right when, when we had her on the show. She, see, Irv, she called Ben and I journalists when we had her on, and I'm like, oh, Lisa, you're just being too kind. We're not journalists. We're just a couple of – we're a couple of schlubs with a YouTube channel. And, you know, she might be right. There might be a touch of journalism in us. <laughs> you know, you, you, got, you, got, you guys know how, to, you know how to get the information. Well, it's just yes, – well, it's, so it's just the thing is, Irv, you're the, the first player that we've had on our show – and the first player that I've ever talked to in my time here on YouTube, and I've been doing this myself for a little over 10 years. So we want, we want to make sure that this is good, that we're not just wasting your time and asking you the same over, you overused questions that you've answered a million times already. Yeah, well, you certainly are not, and I appreciate There's certainly things that bring back great memories for me to, to think about. Yes, uh, and, I, and I'm just glad. Again, I'm th- uh, pr- we're very privileged to hear him. So, Ben, you're, you're next, man. Fire away. Anybody that that follows you closely and knows you and follows you on Twitter knows that you're pretty big into golf. So, how much do you golf? Well, I love golf. Um, the the problem for me is time. I'm a very busy person. Uh, once I, I always go, go back to my, you know, my son is like my life. He, you know. Following him has been such a blessing for me. And so there's sometimes where I, I don't want time to do anything other than Lily. I'm on planes flying back and forth to go see him and spend time with him. And I come home and I'm busy with my, my career and business and things like that. And so the, that's the tough part about my life is that I'm just busy. But I live in Arizona where one 
day, my goal is to be able to get up every day or three or four days a week and go out and play golf. I've got some amazing clubs. I, I did a golf tournament for the Indy Club of Phoenix. Uh, man, it's probably been eight, nine years ago. And they blessed me after the tournament and gave me an amazing, beautiful set of pink golf clubs and a golf bag and all those, the bells and whistles. And, and so one day I want to be able to go out and play golf and look as good as Tiger Woods plays. You know, well, at the very at the very least, feel like him, right? Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> that, that's my goal. Well, well, and speak, speaking of your son, uh, Irv Junior, um, I know that you're a very proud father. You're you're very happy at his success, and you know, being glad to follow him. But I, I got to ask you this question. I know that you know the majority of parents they leave it up to their kids to choose what's best for them and what path to go on, but. Is there a part of you that kind of wishes he did go to Notre Dame? I mean, if he did go to Notre Dame and, you know, be the, you know, the second Irv Smith to be there, would your excitement have gone up just a little bit, a little bit well, extra? I'm glad you, once again, I'm glad you guys asked the question. You know, I, I'm not sure y'all know the story. The truth of the matter was, you know, my son wanted to go to Notre Dame, and I did everything I could do to get him to Notre Dame. And you realize Notre Dame did not recruit him. They literally told me that they had no interest in him. And so – uh, wow, at the end of the that. day, he was a top recruit coming out of high school. And, um, I mean, literally, I called him on the phone. I called Reggie Brooks, who's one of my closest buddies to this day, and said, Reg, I'm giving you my son a silver platter, okay? Let the coaches know. Whatever. Just let us know what we need to do for him to come there. You know, just let us know. And the, the, the recruiting guy at the time said, let Reggie know, we're, let Irv know we're not interested. So at that point, you know, we had to go talk to the, the Nick Sabans of the world, the LSUs, the – Alabama's, the mm-hmm. Texas A&M's, you know, the other, the other good schools, uh, because they literally would not offer my son a scholarship. And um, the, the blessing for me and my son was that he went to the place that God intended him to go to. Um, I, I, my plan was Notre Dame, but God's plan was Alabama. And at this point, we are so grateful at work. I, I thank Notre Dame every day for not recruiting him, because had they recruited him, he was with Notre Dame. And I don't know what the future would have been for my son, but it, it would have been a little different. Instead, he played in three national championships. He went, he went to play school. He played football for three years in Alabama. He played in three national championships. He won one, and he, he was the third tight end draft in the NFL. And, you know, he, he broke all the Minnesota Vikings uh, rookie tight end receiving records. Uh, he broke uh, every receiving record that Ossie Newsom has in Alabama. Uh, and, and at this point, he's on track to, to have an amazing career. If God keeps him healthy. And so I thank Notre Dame because it wasn't part of the plan. And at the end of the day, it allowed my son to be Earth Smith Jr. and not have to follow in the steps of Earth Smith Sr. And he's actually blazing trails that's going to blow away anything I've ever done, thought of doing. And that's, that's probably the greatest blessing for me and the greatest blessing for a parent for sure. Well, I mean, uh, you know, we'll, we'll never say roll tide, but that, that is an awesome story to hear that, you know, that Nick, that Nick Saban was able to give him that opportunity to really shine. And he, you know, he's, he's definitely making the best of it. And, you know, I, I do hope for, for you and him that he does have a long and, and lustrous career in the NFL. But I, I'm sorry, man, when he plays my Bears, I'm cheering against him 100%. No worries, no worries. Guys, I do apologize. I have to go to another appointment. If you like, you can call me back in about thirty minutes. And I can finish up. I just have to walk in this point right now. I'm sorry. Okay. I, yeah, we didn't we we didn't have much left to ask you. We just wanted to ask you about the uh, the charity that you had to to promote uh, from some time ago. Get that after the meeting. Yeah. Yes, we we were we were in the process of having our you know going over to Ireland and having a golf event over there. This this you know for the the the, the, the Navy game and of course that whole thing had to get canceled. So we're kind of up in the air right now, but. If, if you stay tuned with me, as soon as this whole pandemic thing is over and we get back to some normal life, we're going to start promoting some more golf tours, uh, be bringing some of our good friends that we play with uh, across different seas and play some golf and have some fun and support some, some, some major charities as well. All right. Awesome. awesome. Well, thank you, Herb. Thank you so much for being on the show. Yes, it was it was a great well, privilege. Listen, listen. Listen, guys, stay in touch with me. Anytime you guys want me on the show, just give me a call, okay? Yeah. yeah. Sounds great. And- S- sounds, sounds great, Irvin. Thank you so much for taking the time, and uh, uh, just God bless you, man. My pleasure, guys. God bless you guys, too. Take care now. Thanks. You, too. Bye-bye. <laughs> ben, that was awesome. It I, really was. Uh, the, I, I just 
talking to a piece of my childhood. No kidding. Irv, like, Irv Smith. Irv yeah. Smith, everyone. Even, can you believe that, that two schmucks like us got someone of that magnitude on our show? I mean, absolutely incredible. And, and it shows how awesome Notre Dame is. It really does. I mean, oh. and I'm not saying that other guys from other universities don't go on shows. You know, I've, I've seen it. I, I have. But Notre Dame's just something special, you know. Is everybody going to be like Irv? No. But, but, to say that someone of that magnitude took time out of their day, in 25 minutes, to say the least. Yeah. And see, see people, I, we, we wanted to have this interview go longer. Um, but, you know, Irv said he'd, he'd love to come on another time, so there could be a future interview in store. But, he, you know, as, he's a busy guy. Um, he has a – he has – with his line of work and – and whatnot, um, very busy guy. I mean, it, it took us forever to put this interview together, but un- uh, understandably so. And you know what? About a little over 23 minutes of his time, that was that was so freaking awesome. I mean, I, I, I'm not trying to act like a giddy schoolgirl, Ben, but I, I've got... Cause, and I'm not trying to, tr- to treat Irv like, you know, he's royalty or anything like that, but I've got those chills... Yeah. Going through my body right now because that was so freaking awesome yeah. to get to talk to him, to talk to this. And I think it's just because, you know, I was like six, seven years old when he was at Notre Dame. Right. And to actually be able to talk to these guys that you watched growing up. Right. I think that's what it is because it's, it, this was this this was so special and so right. cool. And it's just. When I like since I started doing YouTube in 2009, I never thought that I would get to talk to a former player. Right. Yeah. And, oh yeah. Yeah. Huh. And it's not even just us, Sean. I mean, there are so many times I see you know, like NFL players that 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 get into the league. You know, they just got drafted and they go to whatever team. And there's a Tom Brady on the team, or there's a Randy Moss, whoever. You know. And it's like, dude, I grew up watching that guy, and I get to play with him. You know. I mean, so it's not just us. You know, it's it, it, everybody has heroes. Everybody has idols in a way. And, I mean, to interact with them on at, at any capacity is amazing to everybody. I mean, you know, so, so yeah, it's, it's absolutely awesome. And it's truly amazing. And like Sean said, guys, the amount of time it took to get Irv on the show really – is true. I mean, it took a lot to get him on. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing. Don't get me wrong, people. It's not a bad thing. It's just, we're all busy. We all got lives. And unfortunately, the world doesn't stop spinning. I mean, it's, you know, it, it's go, go, go. So I get it. And to say that he spent, you know, what was that, 25 minutes roughly? Give or take, yeah. It's amazing. I mean, it really, really is, you know, in the grand scheme of things. And guys, you also got to remember, he's on a different time zone than we are. You know, it, it's our evening some nights when we're wanting to do these things, but it's still his day. Yeah. So, I mean... We're Central Time, he's West Coast. Yeah, so, I, I mean, it is what it is. But, yeah, it was absolutely amazing to have Irv on. What a nice guy. Just absolutely phenomenal person, phenomenal athlete. Oh, you know, a I clap- can't wait to watch, to watch his son, you know, play in the NFL some more and all that. And like you said, you know, I hope he has a good long career. I really do, you know. Uh, as long as he has, like I said, as long as I told Irv, as long as he has his bad games against the Bears, I'm fine with that. But other than that, I'd, I'll support Irv and Irv Jr. 100%. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I just, yeah, I just, like I was I was starting to say, I mean, it's 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 always been my goal to, you know, just, just treat, you know, treat, the, these guys are just human beings like the rest of us. Yeah. Yeah, and that's all they want to be treated as. But I, but I, but it's just as a, as a fan though, I just can't help but have that a little, a little bit, of that fan mentality. Oh yeah. Because it's like this is a per, because because mainly because this is a person that I never thought I would get to talk to. True. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I agree. I totally agree. But I can t- I can tell you one thing, Ben, uh, from a, a personal standpoint on, you know, doing the online vlogging here and whatnot. Um, the 11 years or so that I've been doing YouTube and a lot of the crap that I put up with this video right here that we're making now is worth all of it. Yes. 
<laughs> yes. I mean, it, it just, it was incredible. I mean, you know, watch, watching a guy that I've seen in, you know, that infamous clip of him carrying the defender into the end zone. I mean, I've seen it hundreds of times at least. Yeah. Um, that's, that's actually been to the university that I followed my whole life, played there. Uh, you guys know where I'm going with this. It was just, tonight was just such a cool experience. And, you know, Irv, Irv, I, Irv, I know you'll see the video, but thank you again so much. Yeah. Thank you so much. Really, from the bottom of our hearts, you, you, we don't do this to make money. We don't do this, you know, to, to look to make money. We do this because we love, you know, Notre Dame. We love Our Lady, and um, it is something that we share a passion for the the University of Notre Dame, and it's something that we try to bring to everybody else. You know, that passion, that love, and if we can make one person's day, let alone however many others with our videos, that's worth all of it. And I gotta say, even as a Protestant, being a Protestant, I love Our Lady. But it's but that but that's this is you know, yeah, making people happy, coming together, showing the, the true uh the true good in the world and whatnot. I mean I'm not trying to sound like a freaking hippie here, but what you said, Ben, pretty much summed it up. And especially in a time where, you know, there's a lot going on in the world right now. And we keep it at that. And to have a bright spot like this, for yes. example, is wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. Especially because we got nothing sports-wise right now except for, like, golf and NASCAR. So, I mean, and those are good. Don't get me wrong. Those are fine. But, you know, nothing is like Notre Dame football. I'm sorry. No, nothing. It's it's a, it's a special time of year. It's it's a very unique thing, in my opinion. But uh, one thing, one last thing, I wanted to say, um, we uh, Irv, as you guys heard, touched on it briefly. But um, I'm sure we can have him on another time to talk about it more in detail. But we'll provide you guys the link to uh, to the, the cha- to the charity that Irv does work for. Um, cause he, you know, like I said, he was kind of rushed for time. We couldn't really talk a whole lot about it. Um, but we'll, we'll give you guys more details on it. We'll, we'll provide the link. You can go check it out for yourselves. Uh, and if you want to donate, make a donation. Yeah, so. for sure. I mean, it's, it's an absolutely noble cause. You know, it, it's truly amazing what Irv is doing with that charity, especially because he is such a busy guy, you know, with his family and his business and all that to say that he's doing this epic charity is amazing and shows the truly amazing and greatness of these guys that go to Notre Dame. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Yeah. If you want to donate, please, please, you know, anything doesn't matter if it's dollar, doesn't matter if it's a thousand dollars, you know, please donate to his, to his charity because it makes a difference. It really does. Yeah. And it is, it is for a good cause, but for now we'll let you guys read it for yourselves. And uh, we'd rather have him be on and, here to talk about himself, so we'll, we'll just leave it at that for now. Um, yep. But it is for a good cause, I can tell you guys that much. So, on that note, got unfortunately we got to come a little down out of the awesome cloud, <laughs> and um, and this is a good a good spot to uh, to end this video. Uh, so, on that note, I am Indy Sean forty five. I'm Irish Benjamin fifty seven. And for our guest Irv Smith. We uh, just wish you guys the best. Have a great night. And as always, go Irish and God. Straight T, third and goal. Here's the fake. Meyer looking. Meyer finding the other tight end. Irv Smith touchdown. What a.